Okay, uh, before I get started, uh, Page 6th grade championship game versus Ensworth <laughs> Saturday, 9.30. So uh, my son Bryce is going to go against Coach Williams' son there at Ensworth. So b big battle. Uh, bragging rights obviously are a big thing this weekend. So looking forward to it. When, when do we have availability with Bryce? Uh, I don't know. He's, uh, his mom doesn't really allow him to talk too much. Uh, so you'll have to go through her. 9.30 a.m., it's, it's an early one. <laughs> He's had some games at 8 a.m. too, which uh, has been interesting to get him up, so. Tell us about your shirt. Yeah, uh, this is for my mom who passed away uh, over 20 years ago with pancreatic cancer. Um, so uh, it's just good that we can remember her and all the other people that have fought um, through cancer. Um, so I just texted my uh, sister and my brother, told them I got him a shirt so we can reminisce. Uh, yeah, it's been over 20 years. Uh, <clears throat> she passed away 10 days after 9-11, so that was obviously a big thing. So, thank you. I guess uh, I lost Kyrus, I guess, on Friday, and, and Mason slides into yeah. the punt return role. What, what was kind of that transition like, and, and how would you think Mason did? Uh, it, good. Um, you know, it's the guy that's been back there. He, he played against the Rams last year. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, we had a bunch of confidence in Mason going back in there and catching some punts, and it was really good to see him on the first punt. It wasn't a great punt. He did a great job of getting in front of it, squaring up to it, catching it off the bounce, and, and getting positive yards. So uh, we'll continue to work with him. Uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, as we said earlier, we want to catch the ball, get a first first down, but now we've got to be a little bit more selfish and try to get a little bit more, um, but obviously protecting the football. So that's one of the things we'll continue to work on today. You mentioned about helping, though, like helping adding to, you know, it's, do you see that just through three weeks of just how important that's going to be to pick up an extra 10 or 15 whenever you can? Oh, sure. I mean, that's, that's going to be huge for, for our team. Uh, and, and our players understand that. Um, you know, I, I think our guys on the outside are doing a tremendous, tremendous job with uh, Kendall and, and Trey Avery. Those guys are doing a great job, whether we single or double press them on the outside. Uh, when Nick Westbrook comes out there, they're, they're doing a really good job. So our guys are really locked into that unit, and we got to continue to make that a strength for us. Yeah, uh, you know, that was interesting. Um, you know, Tajay, I thought, did a really good job. Um, you know, for a guy with the Browns, with Hopkins, uh, man, that ball was up there 4 or 5. I think we had one of them that was almost 4 or 6. Uh, but he, I thought he did a really good job catching the ball, getting upfield. Uh, we just missed one block um, that I know we'd like to have back. And otherwise, uh, I thought Tajay had a good read on it. Um, you know, we're going to continue to mix it up, whether it's Tajay back there or someone else, uh, Chris Moore, any other guys that we want to feel that can go back there and return it, um, whether it's getting touchbacks for catches or, or returning the ball. But we'll, we'll have to see how it plays out each and every week was hurt more than any other with the losses of Chestnut and Brown. Can you talk about what they brought to the team? Yeah, um, you know, obviously four core uh, special teams players that do a really good job. Uh, and then to add on to it, you know, we lost Luke a little bit at the end. So we had to make a bunch of adjustments. Uh, and that's the great part about our football team. Guys are willing to step up. They might not even got a rep, um, you know, for Luke's spot or Julius' spot. Um, you know, because those are very limited during practice on how many reps that we actually get. But I, I was really proud of our guys stepping up, um, understanding the role that Julius has and, and some other guys that are four core players and uh, them wanting to, you know, be a part of our special teams and, and commit to it and do whatever is needed to win. Thanks. Right. Yeah, um, positive. Looking forward to Sunday. Um, look forward to coming to work, um, getting better. Um, us working together as a whole and then making it all come together and um, paying attention to the, to the details, the concept of the play, and then let it transition out here and then let it go into Sunday. I think one of the coaches was saying earlier this week there's been a, a real emphasis on, on details uh, for everything. What, what, what does that mean, like maybe for you or, or for the running backs, you know, focusing on, on details? Yeah, coach has been preaching that all week. Just understand what you're doing. Understand the details of the play, what we're trying to get done to make the play successful. I mean, that takes all 11, but every guy got to be locked in on your job specifically on each play. What, what do you see, Derek? Is uh, I guess how important to, to 
have success in the running game, you think, on Sunday? And maybe what stands out about the Bengals as you try to do that? Um, it takes all 11. Everybody uh, focused, um, having the will to uh, get off the line of scrimmage, um, create space, us finishing runs, um, guys uh, going there and digging out uh, safeties and DBs. They really love to blitz the nickel. Um, they've had success against us um, in these past couple of games. And, um, you know, we just got to be uh, better focused, um, play better, get into drives, and everybody do their job the way they're supposed to. One of those details that you're really honing in on to, to help you do exactly what you just said for the Pennsylvania's? I mean, just whatever play is called, just knowing my, my job and trying to execute it the best way I can. And, um, you know, being focused in the meetings to uh, know the whole the whole concept, all of us, and then doing it out here and then going out there Sunday, putting the plays together so we can have success. What about the stuff that's in the playbook, Derek? How much, how much of that are we seeing from a creativity standpoint? Say that again? Uh, how much of the playbook in the running game are we seeing so far? And what sort of creativity or new stuff comes in week by week? Uh, you got to ask Tim that. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what you're trying to ask. But, you know, we just <clears throat> try to go out there and do a, uh, and try to go out there and make uh, success out of what's, what's called and just do our job. Derek, you had a shut down few opportunities in a game in a long time, like on Sunday. Does that make you kind of chomp at the bit this week? Are you a little extra motivated to get out there on Sunday? I'm always um, motivated to uh, play the next game. Um, you know, uh, last weekend, you know, it was, it was rough. We had much success, um, clear and obviously. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm always going to be locked in, always going to be focused on my job and what I got to do and try to go out there and, and, and play my best. Um, but did last week add a little bit more fuel, definitely. Brian was talking yesterday about leading with individuals versus leading in a group. Just after a loss like that, do you talk to a whole team? Do you talk to individual teammates? Do you kind of leave people alone? Just what's your approach after a loss like that? Yeah, I mean, leaders definitely, you know, we all want to step up, all want to be vocal. All want to go out there and work and let our work um, show and um, do whatever we can to get everybody going. That's the, uh, the title of being a leader. And I think guys are trying to do that the best way they can and get guys going and give guys confidence, let everybody go out there, but also have fun playing the game as well. Yeah, what do you feel like it has been the past three times you've met with the Bengals that maybe they have your number and you guys aren't able to, to kind of get over the hump in that situation? This has been a better team. Um, the last couple of times we've, we played them and credit goes to them. Um, the game plan they put in, they've, they've worked. And we didn't execute enough to be able to have success against those guys to be able to win. So um, you know, they have had great green game plans um, against us. And, um, you know the credit goes to them. But uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we come out here and um, uh, get better every day and let it transition to Sunday. I mean, I know they didn't get off to a great start, but they're still a great team. So it's going to be a tough matchup. It's a new year. Do you you guys feel like you owe them one maybe after the last few years? Not really owe them one. I think we treat it as the next game. Don't get too caught up in emotions. Um, things like that happen. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we got to line up and, 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 and play on Sunday. So they're a great team. Um, they're coming off a win, and you know, we, we're looking for one. Trying not to get tied up in emotions, uh, you know, and this is a fresh season. But at this point, there's been a lot more losses than the wins. Is this, how frustrating does that get? And do you have to deal with that or try to ignore that? I mean, we're just three games in. Mm -hmm. Lost 2 1 1. Um, we still got time to get back on track as early in the season. Um, we definitely don't want to go out there and, and, and lose, but sometimes adversity strikes earlier than um, other times. So just staying focused on, um, on what we want to do, and how we want to play as a team, and take it week by week to try, to try to go out there and get a win. But at the end of the day, it starts out here and let it transition to Sunday. How much do you hate to see Julius go down? And maybe what have you said to him to kind of lift his spirits? Yeah, uh, you know, I've. Tough, tough for Julius. Um, you know, he was all he was in good spirits. Um, even even after, you know, anytime I see him in here when he's in the building, I will just talk to him and try to lift his spirits. But I have no 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 doubt he'll be back. You know, once he goes through what he goes through and um, work works through it, be back, be the same player, the same effort he gives um, when that time comes. Scoring was was big issue with last year's team, and, and you guys are down this year and went two games without scoring a touchdown. 
How, how confident are you that this offense is going to take you to places where you can be more like what you were against the Charger? Still confident. Um, like I told her, we just had a, a tough one, a little adversity. But at the end of the day, um, you just got to trust and believe and um, your training and, and what we do. And eventually it'll pop off for us. Um, the last, last weekend was a tough one, but never let it waver your confidence and how we want to be as the offense. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't think that part of it's tough. I mean, it's tough to watch because no one's proud of what, uh, what it looked like or what the end result was. Um, but I, it, it does provide us an opportunity to be able to go and say, hey, when you, when, when, when we're not as detailed as we need to be, when we don't do the things that we want to and, and execute the keys the way that we need to, you can go out there and, and put out a performance like that. So. Um, you know, unfortunately for us, uh, we, we, we have to be able to learn from that and move on quickly because, again, we got another good opponent coming in here in a couple of days. When it comes to the line, uh, the O line, you, know, you mentioned details, and that seems to be a big emphasis this, this week. What are some details, you know, in particular, maybe that you want to see the line? Yeah, different. Um, you know, making sure we understand who, who we're working with, uh, making sure we understand the different, the different uh, you know, checks, plays, looks that, that may be triggering uh, based upon what we're seeing. Um, and then understanding when we have help, um, and then you know there's going to be times where we got to go out there and win a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and, and understand when when that's going to happen, and what techniques we need to do, when techniques we need to use in order to get that done. How do you determine the line between help, no help, when you're going against a dominant guy like Garrett or a guy who's having success like Hendrick? Hendrick yeah, Hendrick. yeah. Um, obviously, you know, it seems like every week when you're playing uh, these teams, there's there's a, a guy who's making a lot of money you know, rushing the passer on the edge. So um, we, we, we are very aware, uh, and there's going to be times where we need to pick our spots, um, where we think either the ball is going to get out uh, based upon the different uh, situation where we're at in the field, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, there, there is a fine line there to make sure that, that we are getting enough help uh, to those guys on the edge and uh, to make sure that we're giving our guys a chance to be successful. During that game, sort of change how you looked at that game plan based on. Yeah, I think you kind of get a feel for it as you're going going through. Like, hey, we're we're holding up. Uh, hey, you know, we may need a little bit more help. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of a fluid thing. But we definitely went into the game plan, um, you know, with with different ways to try and get help to different people. Is it when a team is winning like that up front, like how much does that limit what you're you're able to do? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it it definitely limits what's going on. You know, the the more limiting factor ends up being being in second and twelve and being in third and long. Like that's, again, I, uh, hopefully this is the last time I have to say that. But if if we're living in that world, it's it, we're it's going to be hard. I don't care who you have blocking up front. Like that that's hard. Um, those guys are pinning their ears back. They they don't have to worry about you know in, any type of run game in that situation. Um, and, and they're getting, you know, they're, they're, they're able to go rush the passer, which is what they get, you know, paid to do and, and work all day on it. So we got to do a better job staying out of those situations. So those same guys are giving you problems to get gains on, on first down. How, how, do you, how do you solve the first downs? Um, yeah, uh, I can help them out with better play calls, and, and you know, we, we got to do a better job of, of uh, executing. What goes into the decision of let's give this guy some help and, and keep him out there, or let's try to figure a different way to help him versus making a lineup change like you do when you put Dylan in. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a, a you know, a lot, bless you, I think there's a lot of things that go into it, right? Um, ultimately, that that group, it's, it's all about the sum of the five. Um, so how do we get our best five on the field? Um, and then how do we get those five to play at a higher level uh, than what they played at last week? Tim, what about the running game in regards to getting that going? I mean, yeah. Is it a creativity thing? Is it a winning one-on-one -on -one thing? Is what, what all goes into that being better this week? Yeah, it's probably a combination of everything, you know, uh, leaning into more of what we're, we're more efficient at, um, you know, limiting some of the moving parts, whatever it may be. I think it's a combination of, of you, know, you know, whether it's being more creative, being less creative, uh, of kind of finding that sweet spot. And then, again, just making sure that um, we're putting our guys in a good spot and, and they feel confident in, in what we're asking them to do. Situations. What, what would you like to see more out of them? Yeah, just continue to be consistent. I think that's what it is across the board, right? Uh, you go back and, and, and you look at some of those plays from the other day, and there's a couple couple where it's like, okay, that play was blocked pretty well, and then the very next play, it's like, holy, like that was not blocked very well. So we just got to do a better job across the board, um, uh, j just with the consistency of being able to go out there and execute. When you're struggling up front, how do you ensure that a guy like Derek still gets his touches? Yeah, um, just got to got to continue to again figure out what what 
is best for us schematically in terms of the different run games and the different run schemes, um, and then continuing to 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 have have trust in those guys up front um, because obviously you know just got to get Derek started, and then and then we've all seen the highlights of him being able to make huge plays. So uh, it's 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 a combination of kind of both of those things is continuing to ha have have trust in Derek, and then making sure again that we're executing a little bit more consistently. How many front. explosive plays did you guys, when you watch the film, maybe leave on the field because of a missed block here? Or yeah, I, I mean, I, I, that was a long time ago, to be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm, we are, we're past that. I, I don't know that off the top of my head. There were a few. There's always a few, though. Tim, with, with the offensive line, uh, what are the little things you, you've seen them do, or, or maybe what they've done in spurts that give you confidence that the product can Yeah, be yeah. I mean, you, you, you look at, you know, you look at how we performed against LA. Uh, first and second down, did a really good job. There were multiple times where Ryan was back there with with plenty of time to to, to function and and be able to take some of those shots. Um, you know, it's again like you see spurts of it. We just need to do it more consistently. Tajay in the passing game, I think it's seven catches, ten yards. Just what needs to be done to kind of unlock that skill a little bit more? Yeah, get in situations where we can get him out and get him in, get him the ball. Still sit in meetings. I don't know when he's coming back, but as far as Skaronski, is he able to sit through meetings where he'll be ready to hit the ground running when he's when his health allows it? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, it was it was good to get him back in the building and, and see him back in here. Um, you know, obviously Pete's he's he's intelligent, he's diligent. Um, so I'm I'm not too concerned with that. Kind of, uh, Burks, the, the 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 full Traylon Burks right now, or I know you know he's missing time in camp and. Uh, you know, seems to be maybe still dealing with the injury. Is that holding him back at all? Do you think? Um, you know, I, 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 there are definitely times where, when he's out there and, and you feel him running and you feel his speed and you're feeling him being able to get behind two pretty good corners that we played last week. I know he draw the Drew drawed whatever the word is, right? The DPI there on our sideline um, had a couple other opportunities. Uh, so you, you, we're we're definitely seeing uh, flashes of, of of what we we feel like he can be. Goes into your own self evaluation, self evaluation of what what you've done in regards to play calling the first three weeks. Yeah, um, you know, always always evaluating it. Uh, don't don't <laughs> don't sleep a whole lot after it, especially after a game like that, because you're always constantly, you know, what could I have done better? What what could I have done differently? Um, so I, you know, good or bad, I think you're always in in the mode of being able to go and evaluate um, what you're asking your your players to do. Um, so yeah, you know, again, like we talked about, just got to find a way to get them into a rhythm quicker. In regards to Andre, I guess in particular, it's like the numbers and kind of the eye test would seem he's kind of struggling against the, the pass. But are, are you seeing signs that he's learning? You know, as he's going along, that that they're, you know, that he's making some some improvements. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like you go and you watch the tape, and there's times where he's singled up on on arguably one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, and he's blocking them. He's doing a good job. So it's just again finding that okay. Look, here's the techniques that that we're teaching that that you're using, and and when we do it consistently, like you're pretty effective. I mean, in terms of athleticism and his ability to to be able to match and mirror on the edge, it's 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 up there, you know. So just being able to continue to trust the techniques and, and trust in his ability to be able to go out there and, and execute because when he does, it looks pretty good. Good. Thank Appreciate you, guys. Yeah. So. Uh, these are two extremely special women to me. Um, my mom, my mother-in-law, both are uh, battling, fighting uh, breast cancer. Um, extremely tough individuals would never know they're dealing with what they're dealing with. Um, really proud of them and the way they carry themselves, the way they battle. Um, but yeah, good to represent them. Um, Show encouragement for them, and then also bring awareness to a nasty disease. So, Shane, uh, switching over to Joe Burrow, he he showed that even with a sore calf, that he could, you know, maneuver and get some balls completed. How, does that make him more dangerous, or do you do you <clears throat> prepare for a, a fully healthy Joe Burrow? Yeah, it's unique. Uh, I mean, it, he's he's different than what he's been, obviously, just because there is some limitations with his mobility. Um, in the past, he's always been a threat to take a scramble in when it's there, to extend plays, um, to make plays down the field late in the down. Um, so, I mean, you see a little bit of a difference. we got to be able to rush and, and affect him just the same. Um, and we'll kind of see as he progresses, 
here. I mean, he, he said it himself, he felt like he's getting stronger week by week. So we'll kind of see where he's at here this week. But I mean, we got to be ready to cover and rush just like any other quarterback. How much do you take from what they've done against you the last couple of times? Hey, I think you go back and look. You always do. Um, kind of see what shows up, how, how they're trying to attack us, different things. There's, there's things that kind of show throughout the different games we played against them. And then there's always going to be some new things, some wrinkles that show up. Um, Again, last year, Chase didn't play against us, right? So that was a little bit different uh, where he's going to be out there here Sunday, obviously. So, I mean, you take some things from it, um, but you're always preparing for something new, too. I agree. Chase, Chase does, obviously, but, but how tough is, is T. Higgins and how, how difficult a matchup is he? <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, this is probably the most dynamic skill group we've faced so far between Chase, Higgins, Boyd, Mixon, right? They're all uh, pretty dynamic players when they get the ball in their hands. They all are a little bit different skill set. Like I talked about a few weeks ago, we got to know who we're going against. Chase is different than Higgins. Higgins is different than Boyd. Boyd's different than Chase. They're all different types of receivers um, who really play at a high level. So we got to make sure we understand who we're on, who we're covering, what their skill set is, and what they're going to try to do. It's just the, the size. The size, the catch and run, the 50-50 balls, the balls down the field. Um, I mean, he's a he's a really good receiver in this league, and we're going to have to be competitive down the field on him. We are. He does a good job timing it up, going up, high pointing the football. Um, and then when he does catch it, we on the underneath stuff, we can't, we can't let him build speed and get going. When you go into a game, do you have kind of a scouting report about the officiating crew and how they're known to call games so you can instruct your corners specifically about how physical they're allowed to play? Yeah, that's something uh, – Braves and Stretch go through every week with us. We we meet about it. We talk about it. Um, we bring it to to note with the with the players. But I mean, early in the year is hard. You know, you go off of kind of what they did last year a little bit and have an idea. But um, it is something we address. The X plays that have happened against the passing game so far. How many of them have been? guy like Amari making a great play on the sideline the other day. And how many have been things where you're in the film room saying we have to correct this? Yeah, I would say probably if I had to put a percent, I would say 50 50. You know, I mean, I, I don't think there's been a lot of bust, so to speak. I don't, I mean, there's been a couple, don't get me wrong, there's been a couple busts, but I think uh, some of those we've been beat one on one at times, right? Um, down the field, and then other times we're close enough and they make a play, right? Which that's the definition of 50 50 ball. We got to make sure it's more 50 50 than what it's been right now. Um, go ahead. <laughs> I think our guys, we got to make sure we're playing with better technique and fundamentals. I think that's where we're, we're not where we need to be right now. Like whether we're in man, whether we're in zone, whether we're in a match coverage, like we got to understand what coverage you're playing. And each coverage has a specific technique, depending on where you're aligned, where you're at. And then the fundamentals really carry on throughout, whether you end up in man or zone, um, understanding what's going on and what, what it takes to execute the coverage, right? And I think some of these one-on-one -on -one situations, our technique hasn't been the best. I think we got to be better with our eyes. We got to be better with our leverage. We got to be able to be better at the line of scrimmage and not let these free releases. So there's a lot of technique stuff that's showing up that's, that we're working on, and it's just it's got to improve. Does Sean need to calibrate better with how the game's being called with his physicality? Yeah, I mean, I think the the, the first third down. I get it. I, I can kind of see why they called that one. The second one, I, I think it's some some crews call it, some crews don't. Um, I thought he was pretty square on the second one there later in the game. Um, again, if we're challenging and we're aggressive and they're not dumb penalties, you kind of have to live with it at some point, right? You got to be able to play the game how it's being called. And again, every receiver is going to be taught make sure you're pushing off because they're not calling it, right? So in order to be close, you got to be able to challenge and play aggressive and be physical with these guys, especially on these sticks, stick routes on, on third, fourth down, right? It's the down the field stuff, the grabbing, the guy get behind you, not locating the ball, all that type of stuff is the stuff that we got to make sure we eliminate. And, and at times, if we get called on being too aggressive at the sticks, so be it. We got to line up and play again. Is Christian's confidence taking kind of a hit uh, because – in terms of and what do you have to do to try to get him back to play in the way he was in camp and preseason? Yeah, I think just being out here, 
right? I think he's got to practice. He, he was dealing with some stuff early on. Um, the practice, the speed of practice, lining up and going. And like I talked about earlier, just the technique and fundamentals. Play in and play out. We got to assume every single guy on the field has to assume they're going to get the ball thrown at them every single play. Like, that's how we got to play. We can't take plays off. We got to be locked in because the moment you do, they find it, right? So I, I have no no question about his confidence level. I know he, it was a whatever, busted coverage, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then he, he had the DPI on the third down, which, or on the GBOT, which I thought he was in good shape. I really do. I thought he was in good shape. And then late, it just kind of got away from him down the field. But he was in pretty good position on that one, the one they called on Coop. Um, so, and then the other one, I think, with Coop, that's, I mean, they're, they're, comp they're competing, right? Whether you want to call it a push off, whatever you want to call it, he's competing, he's battling, much like I talked about earlier. They're going to win some, we're going to win some. Hopefully, we win, win more than we lose. Shane, that technique you're talking about other than different coverages, is that related at all to anything you guys on your end of change this year? Or is it just players need to be more mindful of stuff they should Yeah, do? a little bit. Like, we, we're doing some different things coverage wise. Um, Obviously, with Chris coming and some of the stuff he's done in the past, we're doing some different things. And he's got a different way of doing things than maybe we've had in the past year just with specific techniques, right? And I th think a lot of that stuff we talk to our guys about, like, we're going to have stuff we believe in as coaches. But at the same time, if there's things that, I mean, that's part of being a pro. If there's things that you've done differently that you feel more comfortable doing, like, we're all for it. Like, but we got to go do it, right? So, um I think in a lot of the stuff, there's a lot of similarities, the eyes, the vision, the footwork, right? Playing square, all that stuff carries through on a lot of the stuff that we just got to make sure that, that we're getting play in and play out. Is this where you kind of expect Harold to be at this point? And maybe what, what would you like to see from him? Yeah, I think he's still working his way back, right? Getting back out there, live action, rolling. Um, I think the thing with him, he's just got to continue to press the envelope and practice continue to press the envelope out there and when he's going he's got to go you know he's got to go and again he's he's coming back and it's live bullets now where in practice it's one thing um but there's live bullets there's bodies flying around there's a bunch going on um and we just got to go play like you got to go play cut it loose and play and 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 he'll get there thanks yep thanks a lot